Okay, I was trying to solve this problem about a year ago. I'm just going to do a quick demo of how to convert 4.3 to widescreen. Um, I know there's a lot of videos out there already on this, um, but a lot of them, a lot of them are crap in my opinion. Okay, so what you want to do is load your new project and make sure it's uh, widescreen. So here I'm using full 1080p. And this is only um, a DV quality video. This should be smaller, but that's the right aspect ratio that, we're, that we want. So I'll show you a couple of ways you can get this. Now, a lot of the tutorials, whoops, a lot of the tutorials on YouTube just say to do this, which is to go into source in the event, pan crop, and tick no on maintain aspect ratio. And you'll see there that that will stretch out the video to wide. Now stretching out of that can have its benefits. If you're keeping the same height in terms of pixels, and you won't have any uh, stretching going on there but on the width it can look a bit odd especially if there's a lot of motion going on you know if things are rotating in the video or the video is rotating that's gonna look um, pretty lame so I don't do that um, instead you go up to the top here hold control and you drag down here until the black borders on the edge are gone so about there now sometimes it does this funny thing where you can it starts to show a little black on the bottom. Uh, if you keep going, you're going to super wide, um, which is kind of cool if you want uh, like a film effect. If it's messing about there, you can kind of zoom in a bit and try and get it right. But yeah, that's that's how you that's the best way to convert it. Another useful thing you can do once you're in here is you notice that this video, if I just drag it, is very bumpy. Um, so if you haven't got any video stabilization, you can use keyframe markers to manually stabilize it. So what you do is you take a point of the video and you line it up with the at one of the edges. So if I line up uh, that line on the dash there, that line on the video, and go to the next frame-ish, and go up. Oh, there's a lot of frames in here. So you see it's kind of working there. And then on the TV there, you can... On the edge in this bit here. But it's now a bit more stable because it's following it. And if I go all over that, you can see it's bouncing a bit more. So that's that's one good thing. You can use a bit of manual stabilization on there. The good thing about doing the stabilization this way, compared to, uh, say, using um, After Effects or something like that, is it's not lossy because you're not you're cropping you're not zooming in that's one of the benefits there and on this piece of footage I wouldn't do it because it would take ages and the results aren't going to be that good unless you do every frame um, but if you if you've got a footage where you know you accidentally pan up a bit and then you pan back down you could cancel that out with this now it looks good but you might have a problem it's likely that the standard aspect ratio video you've got has been shot with interlaced video. So if you zoom in here, you'll start to see these lines because this is an interlaced video. But if you're cropping and then exporting the file with a larger width, um, you might find that you see some of these lines even if you export it on progressive or interlaced. If that's the case, what you need to do is before you do this crop is to re-render your video to progressive mode first because you don't want those lines on there. So yeah that's it for today, just a quick little demo. Found that useful, just like the video, share it, whatever. Cool.